What's up, Wargamers? We're back. And in case you missed out on the 1,000 subscriber giveaway, Mr. Patrick Yang was the winner. And he elected to get a Start Collecting Tau, uh, or Start Collecting Craft Worlds, whatever you call that box. That comes with a Warwalker, it comes with a Wraith Lord, it comes with five of the Wraith and a Farseer. So that's a great value. And I'll be shipping that out to him here shortly. So stay tuned to us here at B Budget Wargamer. We've got a lot going on. And I want to get some of your thoughts, so in the comments below, let me know what types of videos you guys are most looking forward to. Do you guys like painting tutorials? Do you guys like current events with Age of Sigmar, Warhammer 40,000? Do you guys want to see stuff that goes on on my hobby table? Still working on my Imperial Knights. I've got a seventh one underway. Um, it looks like instead of having 12, I've got thir 13 or 14 now, because uh, I needed to pick up another one that I'm doing a conversion on to make my leader so I wanted to, I wanted to make the character model a little bit more characterful so I'm working on him and you can see that I've shaved away enough room to put on one of the larger Imperial Knight heads because he's gonna have the armor of sainted ion for the two plus save but I'm also gonna give him the cod piece or whatever you'd like to call that from the uh, larger Imperial Knight so when you compare that to the Armager Helvrin or the Armager Warglaive it's a larger piece of, of armor for the cod piece and then also uh, since he's going to be I'm going to I'm going to use him as a helvern because when I play them as hawk shroud even though I'm painting them red um, the duty sworn or whatever you call that um, his his warlord trait allows him to reroll ones when targeting the declared unit and I felt like that would be more advantageous on a helvern seeing that you have four die three shots every single turn so along with this, to make him look like he's, you know, a veteran of a long war and that he's got some special war gear accumulated or modified over time, don't go stealing this idea from me, but I'm making him more like a mech and instead of having the regular Helvern arms and the, and the shoulder pads, he's going to have two of these, um, they're still going to be counts as the Helvern auto cannon, but he's going to have two of these, um, what do they call these? siege breaker cannons and they're going to be high mounted there i don't know if i'm going to add any type of like little mechanical arms at the bottom i might take something from the sentinels and the sentinels have of course like the buzz saw um little arms but sadly those three sentinels that i had on the back here in my last video that were from that are from my armored company the primer got powdery so <laughs> they're soaking in some simple green right now um, on their second day but what I wanted to talk about in this video, since Tau are being officially released in the kill team, uh, and I've got some Tau here in the back, if you can't see right there, um, all along that line, uh, it's got like 120 fire warriors, something like nine crisis suits. I've got a heck of a lot more that's not put, put together, so I'm, I'm just a junkie in case you haven't caught on, but I wanted to talk about whether or not are, are Tau the new, are they the new elite of kill team? And I could be completely wrong, but when I look through and I make up some lists, because I was trying to think about what I would play and kill team, and I've got a lot of choices like many of you, because it's so easy to grab five to ten models to put together something. But you know, for fifty bucks, let's take a look real quick since I've got it pulled up. Let's show you guys what's going to come in the the box. So fifty bucks would normally get you the the fire team, and that fire team is going to come with the weapons turret, two drones, and uh, ten fire warriors. But you're going to get those here, even though they don't really seem to picture the the, um, the weapons turret, but you can see it right there on the sprue. And it looks like, interestingly enough, the tower are going to come in a white plastic, which is actually kind of cool because I hadn't seen them that way. So in addition to getting that $50 unit of um, Tau Fire Warriors, or Breachers, whatever, you know, however you want to put them together, they could be uh, Breachers or regular Fire Warriors, you're also going to get two of the Wall of Martyr sections. So you know that's well worth the 10 bucks in addition to the fact you're going to get the um the rules for them the cards the tokens everything like that that you need to actually play the tau so well worth it and it's worth picking up it's probably something i'm going to have to grab also while i'm out this weekend even though um i'm not certain whether i want to play them but you know know your enemy you're going to want to pick up that type of box or at least read on the rules so here ahead of time i've got battle scribe pulled up here you can't really see it but I've got it pulled up on the cell phone. I've been looking through the stats on, um, you know, building out prospective kill teams. So you have 100 points in most of these kill team lists. And in 100 points, you could fit 
five of the 20 um, stealth suits. So an XV-25 stealth suit with a burst cannon, real basic, no other upgrades, because they're 20 points apiece, so five of those you squeeze in right at 100 points, you're going to have quite the um, loadout, because each stealth suit not only has strength 4, toughness 4, just like a marine, and a 3 plus save, but it's got a movement of 8, so it's faster, plus it flies, so that's what uh, jetpack and fly. So that's a great special rule, especially when we're talking about fighting in these urban terrains um, with lots of inter intervening buildings and wall sections, things like that. Being able to jump in between them is just killer. Uh, but there's also two wounds apiece, so that's like a Primaris Marine, basically, when you think about it. And 20 points puts it roughly in the same ballpark as a Primaris Marine. But they've got two attacks apiece for um, a Shah Sui because they're all, um, they all start at Shah Sui, which I could be pronouncing wrong, but that's like the veteran sergeant level within the Tal stratosphere. So instead of being a, a one attack of a Shah Sla or a basic warrior, they're all like veteran sergeants when they're in here. Um, you co could, of course, get a Shah Sve um, that would give you an additional attack as your leader. But, um, and, you, and you would take one of those at least because he's also 20 points, but you can't have more than one Shah Sve. So you're going to get one Shas Frey, four Shas La, uh, Shas Wees with the um, stealth can, um, battle suit. And then the burst cannon's got an 18-inch range, which is way more than enough in a game like Kill Team where you're only playing a couple feet by a few feet in length anyways. And then it's Assault 4, so that's four shots coming out of it every single turn. That's going to way outperform a bolter. It's strength 5, so that's already stronger than a bolter. There is no AP, and it is only a damage of 1. Uh, damage of 1 is pretty standard, though. So unless you're playing up against your friend's uh, Rubric Marines and their Thousand Suns list, who would then um, get plus 1 armor save, again, or 1 better armor save against any D1 weapons, which would be most in the game, um, that's pretty crazy. Plus they get the Bonding Knife Ritual, and then their Camouflage Field, so... The camouflage field, since they are stealth suit, says your opponent must subtract one from all hit rolls for attacks that target this model. So yeah, sure, you're only going to have five models up against probably your opponent's average of you know somewhere between five and ten. But let's let's say compare that to playing up against just your basic uh, fire warriors and playing a, a horde of fire warriors is still going to be highly advantageous because a fire warrior breacher comes in at only eight points, and that means that for um, eight points a piece, and I'm doing trying to like scramble do the math in my head. You could put 12 of those breacher fire warriors and still have four points for war gear, or do a spread where you end up having um, like five of the breachers and then three of the stealth suits. That's a heck of a build out. I think that would work. Three stealth suits would be 60 points, five of the breachers would be 40. Um, and the reason I'm saying breachers is because it seems like this is finally the type of game where breachers are actually in their element, they're meant to be in close quarter combat. And that's where their weapon stack comes in place for their um, their Pulse Blaster. So they've got three different shooting profiles if you're not familiar with their Pulse Blaster. At 15 inch range, it's an Assault 2 weapon, which it'll be an Assault 2 no matter what the range is, I guess. But it's only Strength 4, no AP, and one damage. But when you get into 10 inch range, which is gonna happen a lot in Kill Team, it still is Assault 2, but it jumps to Strength 5, with a negative one AP and still one damage. So that is actually gonna be very competitive because you're gonna wound many things on a three plus and you're gonna knock back their armor save by one. But when you get even closer within that five inch range, which is gonna happen if you can if you can stay concealed and maneuver between the terrain and stay hopefully out of line of sight of some of the other things, because something like a bolter is still gonna do some damage up against the toughness three tau with a four plus armor save. But at five inch range, that assault two weapon becomes a strength of six with an AP of minus two in, in one damage, so that means that it gets almost close to being an Assault 2 Plasma weapon um, at that point. So that is insane for a little eight point model, especially when you consider that you could swarm 12 of those into a list. And, it, and if you have 12, you can afford to lose like one, two or three a turn and still be very competitive hoping that you'll have enough alive at the end of the game to be able to bring on a little bit of closure and, and um, eliminate your opponent. So, <clears throat> in addition to that, they have photon grenades, but grenades, of course, are very common. But this says this weapon doesn't inflict damage. That when your opponent attacks you, they must subtract one from hit rolls made for infantry models that have suffered any hits from photon grenades until the end of the battle round. So, 
Um, seeing as that you're not throwing them at an actual unit, it's not as good as it was before. But let's not pass up the fact that drones also are a big part of the Tau list. And a gun drone, for example, comes in at only seven points. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be thinking, get marker lights, all this sort of stuff. But with individual models being the case of the game, I don't know if marker lights, um, of course, having some practice with them and figuring out firsthand whether or not for sure they're going to be worthwhile, I think my initial reaction is that marker lights aren't going to be quite as cool in this game as they are in Warhammer 40k. And maybe that's why they're only one point. But let's look at a gun drone that has a movement of eight, also has the fly keyword, which is going to be good for them. But it's got a toughness of four and an assault two pulse carbine, even though it only has a ballistic skill of five plus. So I kind of think that um, your, your fire warriors are still going to, your breachers especially, are still going to be a go to. But given that the stealth team has fly, that it has jump pack, that it has an assault four weapon that's just going to lay a pattern down. Um, and also have the stealth ability to make your opponent subtract one when shooting you. Make that even worse when you're going to get into cover uh, because there's cover all over the board. So you put a stealth team in cover and it's just lights out. Um, so comment below, let me know what you guys think of whether Tau are going to run the board with Kill Team here now that they're officially coming out. And what are you guys building up for Kill Team? Um, or planning to build up? Are you guys working on any of the Death, Death Watch? Are you guys working on any Thousand Suns? I know I ran into a guy at the local GW store. Um, he's one of the employees at the GW store, and he is building out his uh, Thousand Suns Rubric Marines. Um, and that's not the type of army you'd expect to see, but of course they have rules specifically for being played in Kill Team. Also, with Kill Team Commanders coming out, that would hypothetically raise the points limit of some of these games. So does that mean that we're going to also open up the possibility to see things like a crisis suit come into there or some small vehicles? Um, I, I would really, really hate to see something like the Armager Warglaives enter the battlefield because then it really just becomes um, every man for himself Warhammer 40k, which I don't think would be a really big scalable game. But could something lower points cost like an Imperial Guard Sentinel come into play? And I, I think Sentinels are very well built for urban combat. They also have the ability to be built out with heavy flamers, uh, plasma cannons, all kinds of weaponry, which would make them very versatile. So what kind of other things are you looking forward to or would add to your wish list of what you'd like to see in Kill Team? So definitely comment below, hit that like button. And if you're not already subscribed to Budget Wargamer, we just hit a thousand people. So thank you very much to my fans and followers. It's been a long journey. I've been at this for about five years and looking forward to making more content for you guys.